guys if you saw that thumbnail you know what this video is about it is about taking a 6 volt little BMW and turning this into a 36 volt sleeper so here's the car and here's the situation so I had a guy bring it over because he actually did a good job he converted it from this single 6 volt motor and gearbox and he added the second gearbox. So he had 12 volt motors, 12 volt gearboxes. And where he had problems is he used one of these. Um, it's called a mo motor speed controller. Long story short, it's really not made for this type of application where there's, you know, you push the pedal and it's got a lot of amp draw. And he was running it through this stock circuit board looks like he used some like extension lamp cord wire and he had it running on 18 volts and it was just dying on him it wouldn't wouldn't go so this was the battery he brought me and i told him to get a bigger one because of the runtime um so he said he just wanted something his daughter could drive and be reliable and i recommended going variable speed so he trusted me and I took this teeny tiny little thing and this was a challenge. So how do I get this 36 volts? So let's start with the batteries. So there's two Ryobi. These are imitation ones that he picked up on Amazon. And I am going to put the link to all these products in the video description. So you guys can follow this build. So, um... So we started with the batteries and I wanted to place those because I knew that that was going to be the biggest hurdle is space. There's zero space. The seat goes over this, right? This thing is teeny and there's no room up here really. And you don't want to run that so far away from the motor. So I figured out where to mount the, the um, power tool adapters. Bam. And I'll put some pictures here too. So after I found out where the batteries are going to go, if you look up in there, that's where the speed controller is. And there's the double pull, double throw relay right there. So um, on the back side, so you can see where they mount through and they're wired in series. So positive to negative and then negative and positive out to the speed controller. And then yes, it is fuse protected, 40 amp fuse there, tucked up in there. So, that is the electronics. Here is what we did. This is the stock gas pedal. You know, it's just a, a contact switch. I removed it and moved it over here and turned it into the brake. And then we added a variable speed pedal. And basically I ripped out the entire wiring harness and started over. So um, <clears throat> it had this stock push button here. This is what turned it on. And this is the new key. So here's, here's where this is slick. It literally took no modification. I slid it in and drilled a hole and bolted it in for the key. So how this works is you turn the key one click and that gives it power and also forward. If you click it again, it gives it reverse. So I could eliminate one of the double pull, double throw relays. So we'll put it back in forward gear here. And the secret that makes this work and not turn these motors into plasma is this guy right here. This is a potentiometer that's on the signal wire of the gas pedal. So what I'm able to do is I'm able to cut down the voltage which limits the amount of voltage that goes to these motors and on here <clears throat> I hooked up a voltmeter and I gauged where 24 volt 18 volt and 12 volt was and right now we've got it turned up to max so it is on we give it gas <laughs> You can see that these 12 volt motors plus they're new so um, I've been trying to break them in 
but any more voltage than that, it will turn these things into plasma. <laughs> so we'll turn that down just a little bit to the 18. See how it rolls to a stop? So if we hit the gas and then the brake, you can hear the, the relay click. So that shorts out the motors, but we put a resistor in there that resists the resistance. And I'll go over that on the bench because I actually, this time I actually took the time to write up a wiring diagram and I did a bench display to help you guys build this thing. So um, I just wanted to show you the car. And then another cool thing is when you put it in reverse, it cuts the voltage by two thirds. So you see it's got reverse. And that's it, pretty sweet little build. I can't believe I fit all that goods in this teeny little thing. But you do have to remember to turn it off because it will drain the batteries. And I highly recommend just taking the batteries out when it's not in use, just for safety, lithium batteries. But that's what it looks like. Oh, I get you. It's dark in there, but it is a tight fit. Okay. So here's the goods, guys. So he already had one of these power tool adapters and I had him pick up another one. Now, here is the problem. The first one he had was sweet. It is the R1 Pro. And then the second one is the R1. See, it's check marked there. So when it came, it's not even silicone wire and it didn't have um, a fuse, which didn't matter, but I would really have liked to have the RC silicone wire. So you're gonna need two of those and then two batteries and wire it in series. Um, some more of the stuff that you need. So this is kind of like the, well, not really the brains. This is the brain and I, well, yeah, we're gonna call this the brain. We'll go, we'll go over this since this is not rehearsed. So this is a um, universal or, um, just a generic scooter controller. These look pretty scary and overwhelming because of all these connectors. So I took the time and I wrote out the whole diagram and I'm going to take pictures of this and I will put it in there so that you can screenshot that. So basically out of all these connectors, we're going to use five of them. Motor, battery, um, the power lock, because that's for your to power it up and reverse. And we're gonna use the indicator because that's how we're getting the 24 volts to send power to this relay. Actually, it's 36 volts, but this is a 28 volt relay. And I think it'll live because the only time it's being used is when you press the brake pedal, so. Um, and then obviously the derailleur. And sometimes it's called two put. So that's it. The other three are gonna be taped down. So let's go over it. It starts here at the two batteries wired in series. If you guys don't know what that is, um, maybe you shouldn't be doing this mod, but basically you're gonna jump the positive to negative of the two um, adapters. So that's for the battery connector. And then the motor one, and I even color coded this for you guys. So out of the controller here, it's yellow and blue. And that goes to the normally closed, which are these top ones. So. It goes into here and then it comes out of the common, which is the third tabs down, five and six. So that's coming out going to the motors, right? See that? Bam. And then you put um, a splice in it and a Y. So from each tab, one motor gets a positive and a negative. So you, you, hopefully you can follow that. And then the Next step is for the brake. So you're taking that stock pedal, which looks like this right here, and you're finding the normally open and normally closed, I'm sorry, normally open and common. You're not gonna do the normally closed because that's like a stock power wheels, it would be in like parking brake. So you gotta figure out with an ohm meter 
the common, and then which one is open, and when you press it, it makes continuity. Okay? So, brake pretty straightforward. Um, we've got power coming out of the controller, and it goes into your brake pedal, and then out of the brake pedal, so when it makes contact, it closes this, and it now runs power from your normally closed to the normally open, which closes that and shorts out to, where'd I put? Oh, we have right here. This is the resistor. So it's, you can fine tune this. I prefer to use a 100 watt 0.5 ohm. This one here is a one ohm and it doesn't really have the break that I like. So the one that's on it, it's hard to read, but that's a half ohm. It gives it just enough braking. This one right here is just too soft in my opinion. So power wheels, they used to actually have this and it came stock with a 0.47 ohm. Um, oh, and I'm backing up here because between the two adapters, make sure you have a fuse. So stock, it came with a 30. I usually upgrade to a 40. It is still the weak link. It's smaller gauge than the wire. So fuse protection, please. All right, so we got the brake. And then the derailleur is basically, that's what this is right here. It's just a um, variable speed pedal. And like I said, the secret of making this work is cutting the white or the blue, sometimes they're blue, cutting that wire and soldering in your potentiometer here. And depending on which tabs you use is gonna depend on if turning it clockwise is higher, I like to install it on the far left side because then that's like normal volume. I probably shouldn't have turned that up. If you installed it on the middle and the outside, turning it down is going to actually give it more voltage, if that makes sense. So, other than that, um, you will need some connectors and I don't even know what the name of these are, but um, the one that comes out of the controller is a three tab right here but you will need one of these actually take that back most pedals come with it because here yeah it already comes with it but what i like to do is um this is actually for the key that's why i got these out okay so for the key this is what the key looks like it's real short so Obviously, unless you put your key right next to your seat, um, you're gonna need to extend that. So you could cut this, because it didn't come with this connector. I put this on, it came just bare wires. I put it on just so it's plug and play. But you could easily cut this at the controller and extend it, and then it can all be one, one color wire because you'll still have, say, some blue and blue in the middle, and then just shrink wrap it to whatever length you need. You know, hopefully that makes sense. Because that was probably the one that was going to confuse people and they get nervous about soldering and stuff. So um, I would definitely invest in a soldering gun. Because if you wanted to do these crimps, you're going to need uh, special pliers like this right here that crimp it down. Um, and so that is the throttle. And then here is the key. And I will put pictures in here. So... This is tricky because you gotta line these up. You would think red to red, well it's not. It's white to red, red out of the key to the yellow out of the control lock, and then green to blue. So, because in the box with the key, this is what it came with. Um, I don't think that's probably gonna help you guys too much, so. And then this came with the controller. I printed this up, but um, I wrote on here, white, red, green, white to red. But on this one, it's actually, yeah, it is white, white, red, green. So I'll put pictures of all that stuff so you guys don't have to like, you know, freak out too much. So let's show you guys how this works because you can't really see it in the car. So we'll turn this guy in and I just got this because it actually has little clamps and in the bag it comes with the probes too. I'm going to put a link to the description because man if you guys don't have a voltmeter this is a really good unit. I've been pretty impressed with it. So it helps our channel out if you buy it from that link. So check that out. All right so I got the voltmeter on so you guys can see. So here's the key. We're going to turn it on and I've got it hooked up to just one motor 
So obviously this one would go to the other motor, but I've got it hooked up to the voltmeter. So here's a potentiometer. I have no idea where it is because I was farting around with it, but when you give it gas, So we can turn that up. See, there's the brake, slows it down. So I was like 25 volts. These Vex Pro motors, they got actually bearings in each end, so that could take some more volts. I don't know, what, do we, what, do we, what should we do, guys? Should we blow it up? Because, oh, I didn't talk about the power source. I've just got this hooked up to a 36 volt um, hoverboard battery. So, um, yeah, this motor could take it. Um, but it's kind of loud. Let's not do that. So, uh, yeah, let's turn it down a little bit. So, watch max voltage. <laughs> So that's pretty medium right there, right? So we put it in reverse. That was like 19.8 volts. Put it into reverse. That's more like 50%. So we'll turn the voltage up a little bit more. Seven volts that must be close to all the way up so we'll put it into forward here and grenade this thing so yeah, nice and slows down so yeah that was a zinging along a 36 volt motor so and I've got the uh <laughs> the vents covered up with this duct tape so I could show you guys. So this is basically the whole setup, guys. Here's the the relay. I'll probably put some pictures of this right here too. So shows, I wrote it on there, but it's hard to read in Sharpie. But normally closed, that's where power comes in. You guys can follow that, right? This is intimidating to some people. So I'm trying to help you guys out. So power's coming in and it's coming out of the third row, right? See the, the common coming out, and that's what goes to the motor. It, it's not that bad once you uh, kind of see it and somebody explains it to you. So, and then the coils, those are the 28 volt ones, so that just comes from the indicator, which normally that would be for like a light um, or like a battery gauge, something like that on the scooter. Because these scooters, don't have reverse, so we had to, well actually this one does have reverse. This one must have been for like a Chinese quad, a small quad, but like these, most of these don't have reverse, so you have to use a second relay, which that's, this is this is what I go to. This, if I posted a picture that would this scare you guys, because this is my diagram that I did five, six years ago, um, but I have since eliminated the high-low. There's no reason to have high-low on, um, variable speed right because this was the diagram that was online and I kind of tweaked it this was super fancy it had headlights taillights brake lights reverse beeper uh, it, it was pretty sweet but um, yeah I eliminated this so now I just have a brake and that's why I like this one because it gets rid of this forward and reverse so basically all you have is that top one for your brake power in breakable and then power out well, hopefully that explains it for you guys here. Um, and this is a 10,000 ohm resistor. I actually have a 5,000 ohm and I wanted to test that and see if that gave me a little bit more range because you don't really have full throw, if that makes sense. Like if you turn this all the way down, you'll have nothing. It resists too much, I believe. I self-admittedly am not a electrical engineer. See how it's still nothing. So we turned it up. 
So you can see it's pretty much 12 o'clock straight up. That's like three quarters of a revolution here. There's there's zero. And then it's all it's basically towards the top end, guys. So um I'll probably have to update this video because I don't know. Because this literally just came in, but I already had this wired up. So I don't know if I need a 5,000 or do I need a 15,000 or 20,000? I don't know. So keep that in mind, guys. I'm doing this to help you guys. Oh, that was reverse. That was why. Um, yeah. So that is a sleeper 36 volt build. And definitely listen to the whole video. Don't just skip to the forward to the end. Because if you guys don't install this potentiometer, you will turn your motors into plasma on 36 volts. Well, guys, that is pretty much it for this bummy little BMW build. It was a lot of fun. It was actually quite a challenge. Um, yeah, I haven't worked on power wheels in quite a while. So hopefully you guys like this one and you guys can get some information out of it. So give us a thumbs up and uh, get ready for some more videos. We got cart season coming, building some motors. So yeah, we got some work to do guys. See you on the next one.